It's Friday, Feedback Friday, the feedback day of the week. Ha! Birthday edition. Well, day after my birthday edition. What did I do for my birthday? Played video games. Went to an arcade. Place called uh, The Rec Room, which is in the whole, in the old uh, roundhouse. There's like this train roundhouse in downtown Toronto that uh, uh, they converted. It was a Leon's for a while. It was like a furniture store for a while and now it's this cool games place. It's pretty awesome. It's a lot like Dave and Buster's, but I like the layout much better. Everything's sort of around the arcade instead of, you know how Dave and Buster's is like that giant dining room and, and all that stuff. And then you have to go all the way to the back and uh, it's much less um, over overly warm than Dave and Buster's and uh, the food's a lot better. The food at Dave & Buster's is always too salty for me. The food at the Rec Room was actually really delicious. But you guys didn't tune in for a, uh, a review of a thing. You tuned in for Feedback Friday. Oh, by the way, what did I do for Valentine's Day? Played video games. <laughs> My husband and I realized we hadn't finished Gears of War 4 co-op yet. So we played that for a while and we played the co-op mode on... Um, uh, Mario and Rabbids. What's that game? It's got like, uh, everybody just calls it Mario and Rabbids, but it's Mario Rabbids World Party or something. I don't know. But, uh, yes, we are going to do the feedback for the first two videos. Patrons today, if you sign up for, for the Patreon, uh, are getting a special live stream. One of the suggestions that was made when I, I asked for suggestions about how to achieve my goal of doubling patron patron support this year was make live stream participation Patreon only. So you guys will be able to eventually see the video uh, so you can watch what we talked about. But to participate, you have to be a patron. You have to pay at least a dollar a month to participate in the live streams. That's how I'm going to do it. So everybody gets to see the video, but to participate, you have to, you have to support. And I don't like doing that. I like to be egalitarian, but got our living, right? So, um, now we get into the controversial stuff, um, that, uh, is the reason I need to do it this way and not just worry about traffic and hits because I don't want, I don't want to chase clickbait. I don't want to chase, you know, the hot take of the day. Um, but, uh, kudos, first of all, well, let's be a bit s more somber. This next thing is going to connect to the, um, the horrible, horrendous, awful, terrible, I will not use the word tragic because I guess it is a tragedy in that there is some sort of preventability in this. So maybe, uh, it is a, a classic tragedy, uh, but the, the school shooting in Florida, just awful. Um, kudos, however, to the New York Times for linking to an article that actually says, hey, video games don't cause school shootings. I'll show you guys here. Factors that don't correlate in this article they did. You'll see whether a population plays more or fewer video games also appears to have no impact. Americans are no more likely to play video games than people in any other developed country. Yay! Not that the New York Times hasn't added to the stigma against gamers, especially in its op-ed section, but hey, credit where credit's due, right? I wish they would um, remember that when they run these really crappy op-eds about how gaming is, is wrecking people if more people just played video games and, and worked out their aggressions that way. Like I did on a Kung Fu Panda game tonight. Man, that was awesome. Just punch, 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 punch. Like my knuckles are... Because it isn't... I thought it was a little touch. No, it doesn't register, man. You gotta whack it. The whole thing shakes. I'm like, whoa! That's sweet! Punching. It was awesome. But because I do that, I have no inclination to actually go in and hurt people. That's the thing. Most gamers are like, I don't have to hurt people because I am angry. I can play a game and feel better. You know, some people feel better by getting that adrenaline rush and then sort of the calm down of something like Go Dune, Goon? <laughs> Doom or another, another first person shooter. Other people, I like funny games to kind of relieve stress. That's why I like the, the um, Mario game. 
the Mario Rabbids game so much. It, it does get kind of challenging in later levels, but it's funny as anything. It's really cute. Um, so I, I like funny games or games where I can't think about anything else but what I'm doing. So something involving strategy um, or RimWorld because it has soothing, soothing music. I still can't quit RimWorld. It's my exercise game. I just put on my exercise bike and then play RimWorld and, you know, that, that hour of pedaling and then the 45 minutes of stretching afterwards goes by like nothing. Like, I actually do it. It's awesome. Um, and yeah, that's a big chunk out of my day, but if I don't do it, I hurt. So, <laughs> uh, but moving on to the actual feedback, it's, it, it's kind of a unique challenge, a good challenge but a unique challenge this week because of the two videos this week, the feedback was overwhelmingly positive. I was expecting certain things to, to trigger some people, but they didn't. So yay, this makes me happy. Good for you guys. You'll notice like the gamers are good video, like only two thumbs down, which means two things. One, something really spoke to people in that video, but also the outrage warriors just, it's funny. They just ignore me. They just pretend like I don't exist. They don't try to attack me or try to shut me down. They just, shh, shh. It's like an invisible bubble of space around me, which means one of two things, either they're terrified of me, so they just want to pretend I don't exist, or there's no point in yelling at me because that has nothing to do with their daddy issues that I think are driving a lot of their so-called feminism. Um, but yeah, they completely like shun and I'm okay with that cause I can do my thing. They can do their thing. I draw the line when people attack other people, but there's uh, one comment I want to read. Because this, this one uh, kicked me in the feels. Um, I mentioned in that video, remembering back in the day when certain guys would break out in sweats around, when, I, when they knew a gay guy was in the room. And that's how much things change. And this, this one commenter responded to the comment, and it's a beautiful comment says, uh, this talk was interesting because once I was that guy breaking into sweats when a gay guy was in the room. Then I went to college and made friends with gay people of all genders and it helped. I got to know them before they talked about their sexual preference because it showed me it didn't matter. My best friend three years ago decided he was a she trapped in a male body. That kind of freaked me out. But my loyalty to her as a person meant that even if I thought the idea was nonsense, I had to learn to accept it because she was my friend and her body was her business and in my mind her happiness came first. I even signed the forms for her name change and supported her while she lived out in the open before her surgery. Over time, I came to understand the mental health aspect of her situation and became someone who stood up for trans folk and people who know me made jokes, but I realized I didn't care. My attitude started to have a positive effect. People who didn't understand could suddenly ask me all the things I asked my friend, helping to build an understanding into the mindset and hardships trans people go through. Suddenly, it wasn't such a big issue or taboo, and I'm shocked how a little talking makes a huge difference. Um his friend ended up passing away and uh this is uh something that is is a tragic part of of uh anything involving surgery anything involving uh massive changes to the body um childhood diabetes but um he said he just needed to dump it into the world uh, and he says my point is sometimes people need to just start a dialogue it helps so much and I, I think this comment, this comment is how most people, most gamers feel about the, the ever-changing social dynamics in, in our world. It's basically, I don't hate anybody. I may start off thinking, I don't hate anybody for what they are. I may think people are assholes because of their behavior, but I don't hate anybody for what they are. Gay, straight, transgendered, whatever, we don't care. Just give me a chance to catch up on the terms. And 
one of the things I found really interesting is since I made this video, some trans people have approached me privately. I completely understand why they don't say anything publicly because they'll get pounced on. But people have been adamant, you know, telling me I'm trans and they don't speak for me. And I think it's important, and this is why I sort of do these feedback things so I can uh, zero in on an issue that you guys find important. Uh, you know, the, the idea that these advocates are not the community at large. They often are an extreme fringe of a given thing. They are not the vast majority of people. And it, it got me remembering when I was doing gay rights advocacy in the 1990s when we couldn't just scream at people. They'd beat us up, <laughs> you know? It just, uh, it, it, you, you couldn't. It had to be with a smile and it had to be very gentle because it, it was, uh, this was, this was before like zero tolerance for violence in schools. It, yeah. Um, and there, there was a contingent of gay rights advocates who were actually opposed to the advocacy of gay marriage. They thought that the entire concept of marriage was heteronormative and therefore oppressive. And so they didn't only not want gay people to be able to get married. They wanted no one to be able to get married because it was an oppressive heteronormative practice. And you're probably sitting here going, huh? Exactly. That's my point, that the, the, the factions among gay rights advocates who supported the right for gay people to get married, they won the day. And, you know, more and more places are making gay marriage legal. It, you know, the, the trend line, focus camera, there, thank you. The trend line is, is clearly going in the direction of marriage equality. And that's what happens with these movements. There's a period where things get really loud and really stupid. And I mean, the whole we're here, we're queer, get used to it, marching everywhere thing, very in your face, trying to freak people out. And I remember sitting back and we're like, man, people are seeing that in media and then we have to go in and go, no, 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 it's not like that. The, the gay kids here aren't gonna get up in your face. They're not gonna touch you without your permission. They're, you know, cause, cause there were, were some, I don't even wanna call them advocates, they were bullies. And they like to fling their sexuality in people's faces and deliberately make them uncomfortable and, you know, touch them in inappropriate places. The stuff we know now is wrong. But they were like, I've been oppressed, so I'm going to, you know, it's wrong. It's wrong. But there's always this weird sort of push and pull. We're figuring these things out. And I feel awful for the people caught in the middle of this. Because that, that kind of thing, I believe, does um, contribute to hostile attitudes towards affected people. And it's... It's hard enough to be a, a trans person without all this extra stuff making things louder and, and making things more difficult. And, you know, I, I want to make sure there's a space for people who, you know, are, are trans and don't subscribe to that. It's interesting because some of the most pissed off people I know right now about what's going on with sort of, you know, internet advocacy, keyboard warrior activism, uh, are, are the affected people, people who are trans, people with trans uh, family members, they, they don't like this destroyer of fun bent that certain elements of advocate, you know, activists have gone. And just history is a guide it will sort itself out. Every movement goes through a militant phase. And then it sort of, you know, it, it doesn't go away right away. It kind of gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. 
you know, imagine like a, a, a Mario a Mario character with like six mushrooms and, and instead of it was shrinking down to nothing, you have to shrink them down like multiple times. You have to wear that down slowly like an iceberg. But it, it does decline and now, I mean, gay gay people are so normalized in urban environments, in suburban environments, even some rural environments. It like I said, the the historical trend line is clearly going in in the direction of of acceptance. So hopefully that's a bit of light at the end of the tunnel with this stuff. I know it's tough right now. I know you guys are all sick of of beating on gamers. That's why I showed you that thing in the New York Times because the New York Times has been a major source of stigma against video game players and and gamers. Um, so if if that's turning, if that's changing, that's a very good sign uh, because papers of record like that, opinions in that regard matter. Now, moving on to the feedback to the, the Nolan Bushnell controversy, again, I was really surprised that it, it was so overwhelmingly positive. It hasn't been that long yet. The reason I try to do these uh, videos only a few days after they go live is it gets the uh, the really, like, the, the legitimate users, not somebody who saw it on some hate thread, um, you know, on, on Reddit or something like that, decided to t descend on the channel. The first two, three days tend to be the most authentic uh, response. That's the thing I kind of listen to. And, and you'll see, it's like, you know, lots of thumbs up, only five thumbs down. And that's really interesting because other sort of controversial topics, hot take type things tend to get around 10 dislikes. Maybe those people have finally worn out and they've gone on to somebody they think gives a damn because I don't. Um, but... Uh, most like overwhelming agreement that this stuff is stupid. Now, something that came up on Twitter that I want to address because it's <sighs> point missed um, was the response of Nolan Bushnell himself. And he basically took the high road and basically said, I'm supportive of women, I'm supportive of women in gaming, if that means I don't get an award, so be it. Some people within gaming took that as an admission of guilt. It's no such thing. He did not claim he did anything wrong. It, it's a, I, it, I disagree with the assertion, but this award is not important enough for me to fight it. Now, the ridiculous thing is people are using Nolan Bushnell's comments to essentially gaslight the uh, opinions of the women who actually worked at Atari. And I'm sitting here going, this is paternalism of the highest order. Are, are you listening to yourself? Like, it doesn't matter what, it's not as important what Nolan Bushnell says about the treatment of women at his company the women at the company are the final word on their own treatment. And they're saying, we had a great time. We loved working at Atari. We wish we could go back. But it was sold and corporatized. Their, their word, their voices should be the most important thing here. I, I was very happy. Um, uh, Lonnie Reader, I think I got her name right. Uh, the woman who's been the most active, like, no, this is wrong kind of thing. Um, I got to talk to her back and forth on Twitter. She's a dynamo. She's amazing. And now I'm looking up to make sure I got her name right. Lonnie, okay, Lonnie Reader. Good. Okay, I got her name right. Whew. Um, but she's awesome. And she's just telling it like it is. And she basically said, I don't work in games anymore, so I have nothing to lose and this is garbage. And she's dro she was dropping truth bombs this week, and more people have to do it. I mean, I admit it gets lonely sometimes. I'm not blaming you guys for this. It's it's a question of you know I I have a I have an outlet. I have a platform. You guys don't. Um, and other people in gaming are just too scared 
to resist the dominant narrative. So some days I feel like I'm doing it alone and it's so nice to have other voices going, you know, no, it's, it's ridiculous that people who weren't even alive when this was going on think they have enough of an understanding about what things were like at the time um, that they, they want to tell a imminently successful professional woman who probably craps bigger than them that she was oppressed and just doesn't know it. There were certain elements of being a woman in the 1970s that were oppressive, but what they were saying was, yes, the general culture was crappy. Atari was better than the general culture and people are just shouting them down and basically going, la, 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 not listening. And that's, It's benevolent sexism, right? I know I keep going back to this, but it's benevolent sexism. If a, if a woman is happy to sit there and bat her eyes and whimper and go to a safe spot and be protected and only do what she's given permission to do, if she's agreeable and uh, other-oriented, you know, she's a good woman. It almost seems like women are getting special privileges until we step out of line and then we're literally the devil. That is how benevolent sexism works. And you see it. These women who worked at Atari, who are the, I mean, what happened to believe the women? Like they are the experts on their own experience. The whole point of sexual harassment, if it's unwanted, people feel coerced in doing something. If somebody says something and you say no and they're like, okay, and there's no repercussions, it might have been awkward, but it's not harassment. And that has gotten missed somewhere. I don't know why. It's true. A lot of people do say, no, it's fine, no, it's fine, no, it's fine, when it's really not fine. That's not the same thing, because 20 years later, when they're out of the situation, they wouldn't still be saying it was great. They'd have realized after the fact that it wasn't great, that they actually weren't having a good time. So, they're not going to shut up, I'm not going to shut up, and eventually, like I said, History overall moves in the right direction. There are back and forth and there are corrections. And all we can really do is tell our truth and say what we know to be real. And I do feel like things are slowly changing. It's not going to be the big sea changes, big wave that people are talking about. Waves don't last. What does a wave do? It comes in, whoosh, and then it recedes again, right? And leaves all the crap and detritus that got washed up from the sea that's what waves do and what's left you know is is the shoreline that we can sort of rely on you don't build a house when the waves come in right unless you want to put it on stilts um so we we are making progress i i do feel like people are becoming a little more emboldened to just just makes sense like just go whoa hold on there can be a happy medium here so that's good the the gaming industry is still growing it's still making money right now i think what we have to do is is get the user experience improved some because the loot boxes and and the day one crap and and you know all this stuff it's not fun for anybody but you know the bottom didn't fall out the way people said the sky was falling and all that stuff so that's really good and uh i think that the two videos this week you know i took a very pro-trans stance in the gamers are good hashtag and there was no kerfuffle two two thumbs down that's it you know didn't even get trolled which is weird and then you know I, uh, somebody asked what my issue is with naming, um, naming the, uh, the, the prototypes, the, the, you know, uh, prototype, like the, the work in progress, the working title things, sorry, reaching for words. What's wrong with naming it after the women? 
Well, it's because it's only women is the easiest way I can explain it. Whenever you're singling out one gender, that's a problem. Now, somebody said that one was named Stella after somebody's bicycle. But anytime it's like, well, why can't it be named Ralph? You know, why can't it be named Steve? If it's only being named after women, you have to ask why. And even if it's like, well, we like women. We like to put women up on pedestals. No, <laughs> no. Equality means here. It means nobody's down here. Nobody's up here. Equality is here. That's why it's a problem. If you're singling a group out, even if it seems beneficial, in the end, it's not. And it, it may be that there were some, um, some prototype games named after, like some working title, uh, named after after uh men as well I, I remember he named it after some friend's kid or something like that it's possible uh obviously the story of atari has only been partially told uh so but you know based on the facts i had at the time that you know they named it after women it's one of those, if that in fact happened, no, I have an issue with that. I'm never going to say that that's okay. Now, maybe it didn't happen quite that way, right? It's not the individual instances of naming something after a woman. It's if you're only naming it after a woman, that's an issue. Because you gotta, again, I go back to, I'm going to sound like a broken record today. You got to go back to that benevolent sexism thing. It might not be because they're objectifying them. It might be, be from an attitude where men revere women. And that's not healthy either. Because if you're put up on a pedestal, you have farther to fall. And that doesn't mean you shouldn't love your loved ones. There is just nothing uniquely magical about women. Uh, individual women, like me, are awesome. But... <laughs> there is nothing magical about a woman just because she's a woman. And it's important to keep that in mind. So that's answering that bit of feedback. There, feedback for that one comment troll who always says I don't address feedback. Uh, but have a great weekend. Um, maybe I'll make the, the patron thing. We'll see how it goes. Um, I'll, I'll talk on Monday. Or I'll, I'll put something up on Twitter or something like that about uh, how it's going to go. There's some sort of community feature now on YouTube where I can send you guys, like, posts or something like that that I should try out. I don't know. We'll see. But, um, yeah, that's... Um, patrons are getting the special thing again. Still become a patron, please. Because talking about this stuff, people care about it. A lot of people don't want to put down money for it. So we have to find incentives to get people feeling like they're getting something other than just a warm, fuzzy feeling. And access is the way I like to do that because then everybody still gets the content. It's just the whole participatory thing um, that uh, that is the incentive. And we're going to be rolling out other stuff too. But um, yeah, for now, that's it. Thanks for watching and have a great weekend.